for a brand that has so much uh, visibility and distribution and, and so much great presence, I was surprised that the area of the trade show was so small because you guys are such a big brand. And she was telling me how it's really a testament to how many people can kind of experience it and love it and just like gravitate towards it no matter how big the size of your display is, you know? <laughs> so I thought that was really fantastic. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, you know, I would love, you know, this this call is being recorded. We'll certainly edit things out. And, um, you know, I would hope to be able to, by the end of this, be able to really share with the people who consume our content, which is largely, you know, business strategy. And we really like to profile things that are working in the market, things that aren't working. I'd love to be able to tell kind of the beach people, you know, like story, you know, and, and really like what, yes, what it sure. is about, what it is it about the brand today that's really super innovative and how you guys are, are really approaching things like marketing and collaborations and even things like mm -hmm. wholesale distribution, because a lot of brands are really nervous about, you know, how do I manage wholesale partnerships and grow my direct to consumer business? So I'm, mm -hmm. You know, start yeah. to take it away and, and, and talk me through it. Yeah. It, well, if you like, I can start at the beginning. So how we started the beach people, um, Victoria and I are sisters, in case anyone um, didn't know. And we're based in a sleepy little um, seaside town in Kingscliff, Australia, which is just no one knows where that is. Um which is hilarious because it does, it's got a population of about 6,000 people. So it is very tiny. Wow. Um, <laughs> and we're just based. Yeah. It's a tiny town, but it's absolutely beautiful. Like, um, big wide open beaches, white sand, aqua blue water, and just a really laid back, um, coastal lifestyle. So it's, it's a very beautiful place to live. Um, and we're just about 30 minutes down the road from Byron Bay. So everyone seems to know. Um, where Byron Bay is, and that's another beautiful coastal yes. town. So we're just surrounded by lots of nature, and it's and it's a yeah, just a lovely place to live, which was kind of the inspiration behind the beach people. So when Victoria and I were sitting on the beach one afternoon, we were watching our husbands surf like we usually do on a Sunday afternoon, and I very simply turned to Victoria and said, "Round towels." could be cool it could be a cool idea and she was like that it's a great idea I love that and I said well do you want to do it together and it was a very easy simple moment and um yeah so we partnered together and um we were quite protective of our, of our relationship from the start so Victoria and I I have you know some advice if you are in a partnership either with a friend or um a business partner like a great thing to do from the start we got some advice was to do a sister contract so basically or you could do a partner contract and we went through and we learned what each other's strengths and weaknesses were so that when we were in the business together we knew what each other was good at and we Got always it. played to our strengths it was really great for us to do that at the start to we call it a sister contract but you can call it a partnership contract but it's just something you could you know jump online and do um, like a personality test so that you know each oh. other's strengths and weaknesses and you know your part like your partner is someone you're married to your business partner or a friend if you're getting into business and I do think from the very start of your business it's so important to really know that person and you think yeah she's my sister I've known her since birth but at the same time um it's just really good to have those strengths and weaknesses all out um, in the front and play to your strengths. I know Vic, Vic is an amazing ideas lady. Um, she's, you know, she's very good at numbers. She's very good at figures um, and she's quite strategic. She's just got a lot of ideas about the best ways to do things. And so, you know, it, <laughs> it's no point in me sitting in a finance meeting because you may as well be speaking Japanese to me. But if you know if Victoria's there and she's got that insight I know that that's her strength and um and right. it's so important to play to them yeah so that was really cool when we started we did that um and it kind of took us about two years to set up the business and register the business name and um you know secure all our IP and 
do the design and the website, all of that kind of nitty gritty stuff. So we launched in the summer of 2013 and we launched purely online. We had an Instagram account and a Facebook account and that was about it. And we launched, we just were like, hi, we're here. And it was a bit of the golden age of Instagram where, where everyone saw every post and it was all very clear and you never missed anything. So it was like a pretty great time to launch a business in the social media world. Um, yeah, so we just launched like that. We sold out We sold out our online store in just um, our entire online store just on the three weeks mm-hmm. after we launched. Wow. So it really wow. threw us, yeah, yeah. It threw us into a mad spin because it was absolutely the nature of the round tail because it was a new to market product. It was something that had never um, been seen on the market and it was exciting and it was something that our customer and believed that would enhance their everyday life and enhance their experience at the beach by having a round towel and um, it was very Instagrammable. It's an Instagrammable product so it, it just really exploded. So it's been a bit of a roller coaster from then and Vic and I have never done anything like this before so it is really learning on the spot and learning as we go. Um, yeah so that that's kind of the start of the business and it kind of takes us to where we are now and we've launched into some different product extensions and we, Vic and I are really passionate about designing coastal inspired um, homewares and things that will enhance your everyday life and yeah that's kind of what Amazing. we do cool that's so awesome so like, that's a bit about us is it <laughs> no I think that's fantastic so like as far as like your kind of you know marketing and merchandising and positioning you know yeah. obviously it's really there's so much happening in terms of, you know, how do we approach our marketing strategy or how do we approach wholesale partnerships? How did you guys kind of, how do you continue to think about partnerships and collaborations and distribution partners? Like what is the beach people philosophy around those things? I think in terms of collaborations, um, for us, we have, from the very beginning, we did something that is called a brand guideline and you can make it whatever you want there's no right or wrong answer to what you you include in your brand guideline and you can you can google it and um, copy templates and add in things that you wanted Um, we had this advice from a business mentor of ours that had a global business um, global retail business and we just rung them and we're like how do we create a strong brand how do we know what stores we want to stock who we want to collaborate with, you know, we want to keep our brand um, on the straight and narrow. We want to keep it laser focused and exactly where we want it to be. So Vic and I sat down and we just, one afternoon, we spent about two hours doing it, not a long time. We just were like, okay, this is who we are. This is our mission. This is our vision. This is where we want our brand to be. We want to be like where I'm happy to share it. We just want to be the most loved and respected lifestyle brand in the world. So it's a big dream. It's a big focus. And um, we re-engineered back from that. So we just, you know, sat down and said, okay, this is what our brand looks like. And then we wrote up like a bit of a mock-up, like a dream list of who we would love to collaborate with, with artists, musicians, hotels, um, locations, for example, like we love Montauk in the Hamptons. So we were like, Montauk, and this is the places where we would like to be. And this is the kind of um, aesthetics that we would always like to work with in. So that, you know, you know, now business is now bigger than just Victoria and I's staff members. It's, we've got staff. Anyone who they get our brand guideline, they sit down and they can see exactly who we are, what kind of stores we stock, who we collaborate with, and they can refer to that rather than coming back to Victoria and I all the time. Yeah. Sure. So very cool. And how many people how many people are now kind of internal uh, staff? So kind of going from we've got, two we've to got many. around twenty. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, exactly. That's fantastic. Yeah. And what what was that growth mm-hmm. process like for you? 
going, like staffing up and growing and expanding the vision. And, you know, certainly you can't have yeah. 150% oversight, right? When you have a, a team of more than two, right? Because you guys are working so intimately. So what was that kind of growing and growth stage process like for you? Um, yeah, we, we kind of just, because we were really a very social media based brand from the beginning and we still are. Um, our first hire was a social media person. So it was literally like Victoria, myself, and then we had someone to help with social media to run Pinterest to start an influencer program to work with our brand ambassadors. Um, yeah, just someone who can help us with, you know, shoots and helping styling content. Um, so that was kind of our second hire and then it was then from then on in it was just need based we were like okay we need a graphic designer in-house full-time high one okay we need this and you know you know what your business needs so we probably weren't sure. um super strategic in that direction but it was just um higher as we go <laughs> sort of thing got yeah. it <laughs> yeah awesome. and then as far as like the future of the brands and you know from a marketing standpoint and being out in the market, I mean, I've always been such a big fan of your product and your content. And, you know, it's um, it's truly quite an honor and a pleasure to get a chance to speak with you because I do really, I oh, love the brand. You. I'm sure you get to hear that all the time. You know, everyone's like, we love the brand. It's amazing. So as far as maintaining, oh, like, off the, like maintaining authenticity, right, maintaining the brand voice, continuity, and kind of thinking to the future, like, what are, what are your guys' future plans? Is there a Beach People Hotel that's going to be popping up? Are there some, uh, you know, interesting restaurant ideas? Or, you know, what? where do you guys really see this lifestyle next iterating into? Yeah, of course. I think everyone is looking for things that are a little bit experience-based. So, yeah, it would be definitely a dream of ours to open um, a physical space that has that real experience so it possibly yeah, a day spa or something like that in the in the future would be beautiful. Um, but Vic and I are really passionate about product design. We love designing. Everything that we do um, is designed by Victoria and I, and we kind of come up with collection ideas and work really closely with our manufacturers. And we really, for example, launched our eucalyptus bedding last year, um, and it's made obviously, from eucalyptus, but it's a new-to-market textile. Vic and I are really passionate about, um, you know, being cutting-edge with fabrics and sustainability and working with lots of different products. And, like, it's exceptional. It's so soft and silky. But it's something that Vic and I developed ourselves with our manufacturer. So we are just really excited to work with some new textiles. We've got a denim collection coming out, all made from like the most beautiful recycled denim and it's not in blue it's in like other colors that it's all very sustainable made with a beautiful family factory and that's probably something that Victoria and I are really passionate about we can't wait to um, delve more into home textiles because we just thoroughly enjoy it <laughs> that's so awesome that's really like it's yeah. so great that you guys are still like the head designers you know I feel like sometimes when companies grow right it's like you start to, to hand mm -hmm. off different areas of the business and um it's really awesome that you guys are still so intimately involved in all the design processes yeah i think that's probably um innovative design is one of our core values and it's just something vic and i will always um really love thinking you know getting our hands dirty and rolling up our sleeves and you know we sit on the floor with the staff and flesh things out sketch things and cut things open and get samples and say, would this be nice in this weave and really work closely with our team to develop every product that we design made with heart and soul. And yeah, we, we love it. Amazing. So if you were to tell me, Emma, just kind of your wish list for, I don't know, let's say the next, the next five years for the brand, right? What, what would be on your, what would be on your wish list? We're extending a little bit um, because we're most probably known for our um, beach category with beach towels and round towels, obviously the round towel being um, our most popular product. We're definitely going to do some extensions in the beach category and you'll have to stay tuned for those, but they will launch mid next year, which is really exciting. 
And then we've also done some more outdoor items that will, like in a picnic range, so picnic baskets and really um, an ode to the outdoors and nature. So it be really fun. And the next five years, we'll probably, we probably will open our own space that is an experience-based um, concept. So that's probably in the pipeline as well. Very cool. Well, thank yeah. you, Emma. I wish I, I don't know if I have many other many other questions. Maybe also like I guess just from a marketing standpoint, you know, obviously you mentioned social yeah. media is a really big a big platform and tool yeah. for you. Are there other tools that have been really successful for you guys, or other strategies that you think um, you guys kind of you know hit on the head early or first, or um, from a marketing standpoint, mm. what do you think? Um, or even in social, what do you think has kind of been some of the most effective things yeah. for you? I think definitely for us, you know, when we launched the business, it was Victoria and I, we were working out of the back of um, Victoria has a little beach shack on the on the beach and she just had a shed at the back of her house and we were working from there. And um, we we put everything we could into the business. We put our house deposits, we put all our husband's money, we put it all, like, you know that saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, we put all yes. our eggs in the basket. We were like, yeah, well, we just did that. <laughs> um, and we just gambled it and we were like, look, you know, you only get one life, you may as well live it live it to the fullest and give it a go. Hell yeah, um, hell yeah. Hell yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so... Yeah, we were just like, okay, this is all we had. We put everything we had into our first order. We designed 10 round up, round towels, but we only had enough money to launch um, one. So we just put everything into getting that first order and it arrived and it was beautiful and it was great, but we had no money for marketing. So we thought, okay, we've got product. Let's just get as much product as we can out there. So we just started, and it was kind of, it was in 2013. So there was no words like, um, you know, influencer or right, right, you know, ambassadors or brand ambassadors. It just wasn't really a thing. We simply thought, let's just give our product to like-minded people on Instagram and ask them if they would share it, and that's all we did. And so we we gifted as much as we could, and. Um, it was so exciting. Like we, our friends, we've got some close friends they just down the road in Byron Bay. Um, they're actually the girls from Spell, the friends Spell and the Gypsy. I don't know if you, of course, the yeah. Collective. They're yeah, they're a fashion label, but um, they had around when we launched, they had about three hundred thousand followers. They've got like a million now, but um, yeah, they, they were like they put it up. We didn't even ask them. They just put up a photo of them around town and said, "This is what we want for Christmas." And overnight, we grew by six thousand followers, and the orders went out. Holy shit! Yeah, out the door, <laughs> and it just it just put us into a mad spin. Um, just them saying, "This is what we want for Christmas." <laughs> so it was yeah, so the, the right now. people, yeah, divine I timing. Think so. no? <laughs> yeah, just and we still do that now. We have like a beautiful ambassador program. We work with like the most lovely like-minded and I say like-minded because you have to choose people that are um yeah on the same page as you and your business like I just think that's imperative to really choose the right people and then create beautiful relationships like we're friends with them now like we can call them and say where are you off to where are you traveling to and um right. what do you need and would you like to would you like a towel for your holiday and um you know just and just things like that. And I think as long as it's authentic too, that's a really big key. Don't you know, um, for us we went we we've tried to go for some really influential people on social media and it hasn't really paid off because it's not authentic. So I really do think choose people that are really excited and passionate to work with you and your product. Um, yeah. So that would be awesome. My no, I think that's marketing so advice smart. for any startup. <laughs> and I still think even though it is even though it is a noisy market it's it's a noisy place to be for businesses these days. I think you can cut through if you just um stay true to your brand, stay true to yourself and um really focus on the right people and getting your brand out there in that way as well. Awesome. So you know we so at scaling retail we do a lot of work with 
uh, growth stage companies and some enterprise businesses and certainly with startups. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to hear your advice for a, a larger enterprise business. You know, a lot of times these bigger companies, they, they don't know how to be as agile or as nimble or, you know, they kind of lack a lot of um, adding value to market, you know, as quickly as some of the smaller businesses. But if you were to, let's say, give some advice to uh, a much larger business, uh, more institutional, and tell them kind of how to capture their market or how to innovate and, and think like a smaller business, what's some advice that you might give some of these larger guys? I would, I would really say, um, you know, some larger companies have lost a little bit of soul with content. So I think a great thing for larger business is to um, recapture the soul of your business with content. So whether you're making pots and pans or whether you, whatever it is, it's just to create amazing shareable content that's relevant to your business. I, it is, it's definitely um, content king these days and so looking after your email community because that's the only thing that you actually own so our focus um, is really building our email community through interesting content um, exclusive EDMs to our community of things that are happening so if you join the beach people's email community community you're the first to know about sales you're the first to know um, new product launches you're the first to see our new latest campaign and our content and um, and then we've often got a lot of promotions that are just for our email community because you've got to look after them because that's the, you know, that's the only thing you truly own in this day and age. So I'd be, if I was a company, I'd just be really focused on driving that and um, creating as most interesting content as you can. Amazing. Thank you so much, Emma. You're the best. I really Thanks. appreciate your time.